Mesic, the deeper life, which is being recorded today as on the normal day of Thursday there is unavailability just for this week. And I am Brian Mason. We shall start with reading the first ten verses of Psalm 9. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in thy throne judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name for ever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. Their immemorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure for ever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, Hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Our hymn is one that I've not used before because, simple reason, I've not seen it before. But it's quite, quite a hymn by Charles Wesley really speaks to our hearts speaks to us of Christ Spirit of faith come down reveal the things of God and make to us the Godhead known and witness with the blood design the blood to apply and give us eyes to see who did for every sinner die hath surely died for me no man can truly say that jesus is the lord unless thou take the veil away and breathe the living word then only then we feel our interest in his blood and cry with joy unspeakable thou art my lord my god oh that the world might know the old atoning lamb spirit of faith Descend and show the virtue of his name, the grace which all may find, the saving power impart, and testify to all mankind, and speak in every heart. Inspire the living faith, which whosoe'er receives the witness in himself he have and consciously believes 
the faith that conquers all, and doth the mountain move, and saves where'er, where on Jesus calls, and perfects them in love. Heavenly Father, it is by thy grace that anyone can be brought to a knowledge of thyself. It is thy drawing power to draw Jesus, to make Jesus known to the whosoever will come, may come. And thank thee, O Father God, that is, it is the atoning blood of thy Son, and the atoning blood alone, which can bring the sinner, the repentant sinner, unto thyself. And to receive a full and perfect pardon. Thank thee, O Father God, that it is in Christ and in Christ alone that we who have come to know thee have been able to know thee, have been able to receive the very life of God into our own hearts, to receive that which you have to give the very life of thyself to indwell the hearts of those that you created for thyself. And dear Lord Jesus, we can never thank thee enough that you gave of thyself that you came from the Father's presence and you gave your life at Calvary. You laid your life down and it is in the atoning blood and the power of the atoning blood alone that we are received, we are accepted in thyself. Thank thee, Lord Jesus, for thy shed blood. Thank thee for thy life, thy resurrection life. Thank thee, Lord, that as day by day we walk with thee, as we abide in thee, that we see the very life of thyself be made known to others. O oh, Jesus, we can never thank thee enough in time or eternity. For it was thy blood and thy blood alone that could wash and cleanse our sin away. And having done so, that you have provided the means in thy life to deliver from the power of sin. Thank thee, Lord Jesus, and may thy life, thy wonderful life, be ever more and more all that we need so that the Father Life will be glorified in thyself. Thank thee, O Father God, that we will see thy Son as we turn now to, to thy word. For we ask this, that the Holy Spirit will take of the things of Jesus, the things of thy word, and reveal them to our hearts again. For we ask it in the name of Jesus, that you will be glorified in him. Amen. A 
and continuing where we left off last week in our study of St. John's Gospel. And we got halfway through chapter 11. So we'll continue from verse 30. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying she goeth unto the grave to weep there. Here was Mary. Yes, Martha had already been and met Jesus as he was on his way. And here was Mary, having heard that the Master, the one who had completely transformed her life, because she had been delivered of those devils. She had been set free. She had come into a life so different to the one she had before. She had been bound by the very power of the devil. But once she had met Jesus. She was changed. She was set free. She really received the very life which only God himself can give. And Jesus is the same Jesus today as he was with Mary. Mary, the sister of Martha. Mary, the brother of Lazarus. And here she was going to meet the one whom had filled her with joy, filled her with peace, filled her with the very life which God meant each one of us to have. Do you know that life? Do you know Jesus as the one who has come into your life just like he came into the life of Mary? Should you not, then seek him, because he will not turn anyone away who comes to seek him, to find who he really is, what he has done, and what he will do those who come not in their own merits, not that they have anything to offer him or give him. The only things we can, thing we can give him is our life. He gave his life for you. We will give your life to him. even should you have received him as your Savior? Do you know him as your Lord? He's waiting. Mary withheld nothing from him. And here she was 
having heard that he was on his way. Moving hastily to meet him, because she knew what he had done for her in the moment of her need. And she knew too that he was still well able to meet the need of that day. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. That's the confidence she had in Jesus. She knew Possibly she'd seen some of the miracles that, that Jesus had done. Whether she'd seen them or just heard of them, she had the utmost confidence that had Jesus come, whilst her brother had still been alive, her brother would not have died. Yet the purpose of this was that Jesus would show that not only could he heal the sick, he could raise the dead. And look at what she did when she found him. She fell down at his feet. There was worship. She wasn't falling down at the feet of a mere man. She knew that this one before her was her Lord, her Saviour, and her God. When we know Jesus as our Lord and our Saviour and as our God, we like Mary too will worship him, will adore him, because he has won our love, every bit of it. Nothing we can withhold from him. What a wonderful Jesus he is, a lovely Jesus. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Oh, it touched him. The grief of Mary. The grief which he'd seen in Martha. It touched Jesus right in the very depth of his spirit and he groaned because he knew that he had to do something. He was the only one who could do something in this particular situation. It was beyond the, the possibilities of man or woman to do anything about Lazarus. It wasn't beyond God though. And here, the Son of God himself, whom undoubtedly Mary had recognized that Jesus is the Son of God, she had no doubt that Jesus could do whatever he, whatever he asked of the Father would be done. Do we have that confidence in Jesus? Whatever your mountain might appear to be, 
Are we trusting entirely in God? That's what God is looking from us for, from us to trust entirely in Him. That no matter what may happen in life, however impossible the situation He might allow to come our way, we can see in Him A way for him to open his way for his glory. And he will do it. Because we're not looking to be those who draw great attention to themselves. We're looking to be ones who will walk with the Lord and let the Lord himself do his deep, deep work within our hearts. Totally cleansed clean vessels that the Master himself can use. And said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Oh, those two words, they reach right into the depths of our beings because they show the very compassion of God. Jesus being fully identified into what was, humanly speaking, a time of great sorrow, a time of tragedy, because these two dear sisters had been deprived of their brother, the one who would have been responsible for looking after them. Yet it wasn't beyond hope because Jesus himself was there. And when Jesus was so affected, having seen the grief, not just of Mary and, and Martha, but the grief too of those who had come to share in their grief. He doesn't just come alongside us, he comes to indwell within us. He comes to bring his very life within us. And is his life, remember, not our life. When we are truly his, and when the Son of God is formed in us, because that is what the Father sent the Son into the world for, not just to die for us, not just to rise again, but to be formed in, in us. No separate life for ourselves, but one life in union with Christ, the indwelling Christ by His Spirit. And because of that, it is that same compassion that Jesus had when he wept. That same compassion 
within us. For those who are blindly, as it were, being swept away to a lost eternity, to an eternity whereby they've never come into living relationship with God in Christ, having rejected every plea, every drawing of the Holy Spirit, the compassion of Christ has reached out to millions upon millions who gone to a lost eternity in hell. And the compassion of Christ is still reaching out today to those who are outside of him as yet, giving them the chance to receive him as their saviour to receive the cleansing of his blood from sin. This is our God. Yet God in these days is giving as it were the last chance to millions upon millions and it's their decision whether they accept the chance of having their sin forgiven or rejecting him History has shown that very few have chosen to come God's way, to accept God in these days it is Christ himself who is God's gift to bring lost, guilty and already condemned sinners to that place where they can have their sin forgiven. That will not always be the case. For the signs are there that the return of the Lord Jesus is coming. Yes, I know, oh, you can tell me, oh, it was being talked about a hundred years ago and even before then. But the days are so wicked. There's great rebellion against God. Do you know that as in the days of Noah, there were only those few who got into the ark. Are you in the ark? Or are you just like all those who refused to go into the ark? It's up to you to decide. the most important, in fact, really the only decision of importance to make is your decision of what you do with the offer of forgiveness of sins through the atoning blood of Christ when you repent of your sins. Back to 
Verse 36, Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Oh, what love, what compassion, what love he has for sinners. But he cannot accept the sin. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died. Yes, undoubtedly he could have done so. He could have pre prevented him dying. But there was something greater. The one who is life was coming to show that there is life even after physical death. And that this was to be as it were, looking to when he himself will be raised from the dead. Jesus therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave, it was a cave, and the stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Mar stone Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Yes, humanly speaking. You don't go and take away the stone from a grave. From the cave. Yes, she was right. But she had not seen that Jesus had something far greater to do. And he was the only one who could do it. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, Thou should see the glory of God. That was it. To see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, that's the communication with the Father. The prayer to the Father. The believing that the Father was able to do what he asked. And the Father would not say no. The Father would not withhold anything from him. I thank thee that thou hast heard me. What confidence. Do we have that same confidence? That when we pray to the Father through the Son, then the Father hears. And the, and the prayer is answered. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Those standing there, we don't know how many were there besides Mary and Martha, whether a dozen or fifty, who, doesn't matter. But they were there, and they were to see something which possibly they never saw again in their lives. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. What words of authority? Good Lazarus, lying there dead in that cave, do anything else but obey. The one who is life spoke life into that dead. Lazarus. And he speaks life again to today.
and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot, what a sight, with grave clothes, and his face bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Oh, what a sight indeed, walking out there of the cave. That's God, bringing life from death. And he brings life from death too. When we are born again from above. Because up to that point we are spiritually dead. No communication at all of fellowship with God. Oh. How oh, he's reaching out in these days. Reaching out to the most unlikely places and most unlikely people. Ones from other religions and no religions. Ones who are intent upon the destruction of Christians and Jews. Ones who are intent on what? Seeking to destroy the work of God. But he will not. Take this. God is able, well able, to deal with the situation and in his mercy even pluck as brands from the burning those who have done foul deeds because the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is able to cleanse the most foul sinners and bring them to life eternal life to receive the life of God and to be able not more to cleanse them cleanse everything within them bringing in his own purity his own righteousness his own holiness Oh, our God is a wonderful, wonderful God. Have you, have you sought to receive all that he has for you? Because it's, it's in the spiritual. It's not in the material. It's not in having a better house, or a, a better car, or a new car. No, it's not anything to do with giving something to get something. Jesus gave himself. And here he was giving himself that through him life the words of life were spoken out to Lazarus and he walked out from that cave and he'd received no life. The life which God himself, only God himself could give him. But there were those there who did not like what had happened. Oh, there are always those who are stirred up. Yeah, you guarantee, we can guarantee when God is at work, there's the devil's there, all right. He doesn't like what is going on today in different parts of the world. 
but his time is limited. And ultimately you'll be cast into the lake of fire. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Oh, they couldn't see this. They couldn't see God at work here. They were the blind, the spiritually blind. They had not received the life of Christ. They had not accepted him. Yes, they'd heard him. They'd seen him at some of these. Seen him do the, uh, a miracle greater than anything that uh, undoubtedly any of them see, had seen before. But they would still not accept him of whom he was. And one of them named Caiaphas being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that this is expedient for us, that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation and not for the, that nation only, but o, that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel to gather to put him to death. It was working towards the climax, working towards that Jesus was to give himself at Calvary. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews. That's very significant. That he had been work there doing wonderful, wonderful miracles and teachings. And here was undoubtedly the greatest miracle that he had done in raising Lazarus from the dead. Four days in that cave. And know that he'd raised the, the widow's son at Nain. But he was just, he just recently died and was on his way to be buried here. It was humanly impossible for Lazarus to be raised. Only God himself could do that. But thence he went into a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim. And there continued with his disciples. Yes, he had much teaching to do. Do preparing them for the time that he would, be, would leave them. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake, among themselves, as they stood in the temple. What think ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that he, they might take him. Yes, they were determined to remove Jesus. But it was in the scriptures that one had to die. Even Caiaphas the high priest had prophesied. Everything was working towards that great day where Jesus, the Son of God, would be nailed to the cross of Calvary to die for sinners. 
Are we in these days being real? When we have received him into our hearts and received the cleansing of his blood, are we seeking to be separated unto God in all things, to have nothing within us which in any way will hinder God being able to do that which he wants to do in us and through us. Are we not just separated, consecrated unto God, but continually, moment by moment, day by day, walking in the light the light of Christ and being continuously kept cleansed by the blood of Jesus. God wants to use you. Are you that cleansed vessel fit for the Master's use? Have you given him your all? Or are you still with, withholding that which is most precious to you? These are the questions to, that need to be asked in these days. Much of what calls itself Christianity or church will not ask these questions because they're concerned with the things of, of this world, the things of the self-life, rather than the things of eternity, the things of the kingdom of God, and the things which are for the glory of God. Thank you for being with me. I shall be back this coming Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. British time with the program Reese Howe's Intercession. God bless you. <laughs>